Hello everyone, I am Siddharthan. In today's video, we will be discussing about how to process image data for deep learning applications and how to do this in Python. In the previous video, we have seen that uh, before training a neural network with image data, we have to convert this image data to numerical values and uh, there are two types of images. One is RGB image which is a colored image and there are also grayscale images which is similar to a black and white images and so on. So we have discussed in detail about this and uh, we have also seen uh, what is meant by a pixel and what uh, what does uh, you know a dimension of an image represents and so on. So. Uh, based on that understanding of image processing we will implement all those things in python okay so this is an hands on video where we will completely discuss about what are all the different processing that we have to do on an image before feeding it to a neural network okay so the three main important uh, you know image processing tasks that we will discuss are how to read an image file and how to convert it to a numpy array so this is the first thing and then we will discuss uh, how we can resize an image so this is like very very important because let's say that there are 10,000 images in your data set and um, let's say that each image is in different dimensions so it can be like uh, 200 into 200 image or it can be like a 720 into uh, 1900 image and so on so you cannot uh, feed those images to your, to your neural network because a neural network expects all the data to be in the same shape okay so in other words all the images should be in the uh, uh, same dimensions so we will discuss how we can carry out this resizing process on an image and then we will discuss how we can you know convert this rgb images to grayscale images and i'll also explain you what is the significance of this and so on so uh, if you haven't watched the previous video i have given the link in this collab file and you will find the uh, link for the previous video in this video description as well so please watch that video before going through this one because uh, in that case only you can understand all these things completely okay so let's get started with the coding part so first let's uh, you know discuss about this rgb images colored images okay so the first thing as i've told you will be how to read an image file and how we can convert it to a numpy array okay so first what i'm going to do is so i have searched this puppy images in google so i'm going to take this image and i'm going to you know process this image so i, I will read this image convert it to numbers so in other words i will create an array which uh, which is basically a, a different you know list of numbers and so on so this image will be converted to that particular number array and then we will try to resize an image and then we can convert this image to a grayscale image so these are all the three things that we will discuss so you can search any images it's not that you have to search dog image and so on so you can search any images so just go to this image and right click it you will find an option for this copy image address okay so i'm copying this image address and now i'm going to use the command called as wget so this wget stands for web get and you can get any files from the web using this command okay so you have to include an exclamatory mark here so we have seen this while we are discussing about the basics of google collaboratory and so on so this is a very useful command so in this quotes i have to give the link of the file that i wanted to uh, you know download so this will directly download the file to this particular collab environment so this is the link of that particular file so let's run this okay so once uh, this is you know completed so you can see uh, this particular image has been downloaded and this image is stored here okay so you can see so puppy care guide for new parents so i'll click this you can see this dog image so so you can just scroll it to see that particular dog so it, this is a pretty you know large image so let's just close this and i'll rename this image to uh, you know let's let's name this as dog okay so dog.jpg so it is a normal image so now i'll just also mention here that so we are getting an image uh, using web get command so this will be useful for you in many cases so if you have the link and if you have the access for that particular file you can use this web get command in order to uh, get this particular file and now uh, let's you know uh, let, let's uh, try to read this image and convert it to a numpy array and uh, for this image processing we will come across different libraries in deep learning okay so i'll mention the most important ones so libraries uh, that can be used for image processing okay, okay. so so the three libraries that we will be using are so these are like these are all the uh, widely used ones so first one is uh, matplotlib 
dot image okay so we have uh, seen this matplotlib image several times so we know that matplotlib is used to create graphs and plots and so on so this matplotlib library has a separate module called as image and there are like several functions and commands that we can use in order to process this image eat this image display the image and so on and the another important library is pillow so pillow is another important library which is widely used for this uh, image processing task and the other library is OpenCV. So CV stands for computer vision and we will often call this with uh, CV2. Okay, so these, uh, uh, you know, libraries are already pre-installed in Google Colab. So if you are working in Spider or Python or, uh, you know, VS Code, you can uh, install that library using Anaconda or pip install. So you can install these libraries through that method. So in this case, uh, um, all these libraries are pre-installed in Google Colab. So we can directly import them and use these libraries. Okay, so I'm going to import this matplotlib.image library. So importing the image module from matplotlib library. Okay. So import matplotlib.image as mp IMG. Okay, so MP stands for matplotlib and IMG stands for image. So this is how we can import this. So this is the common convention that we use. So you can use any convention, but this is the most widely used one. So just go with it. And uh, let's also import this matplotlib dot pyplot as plt. Okay, so the, so this we know. So we use this plt, so which is the pyplot module of this matplotlib library, to in order to make plots and graphs and so on. So this is very helpful for us in order to display the image that we have. So I'll run this one. So we are importing these two modules from this matplotlib library, and now I'm going to load this image uh, using this matplotlib library. So this part will be loading uh, an image to matplotlib dot image module okay so i'll just mention a comment here so dot image module okay so let's create a variable called as image so img and uh, mention the uh, module name which is mpimg so we have imported in a short form here so mpimg dot read. so this uh, you know module as a, a function called as im read and this is used in order to read the images that we have okay so iem basically means image and we are going to read this and within this parenthesis you need to mention the path of the file that you are going to read so in case again if you are uh, working in uh, pycharm or spider you have to give the location of you know where that particular uh, file has been stored in your computer okay so i'm going to go to this doc.jpg that we got using this wget command i'm going to copy this path and let's uh, put it here okay so now what happens is this image will be uh, read and it will be stored in this variable called as img now i'm going to check how this image has been loaded okay so type so this type is a keyword in python and it will uh, tell you what is the data type of that particular variable or particular data and so on okay so type of image so this img is nothing but the image that we are loading so let's run this and see so it is and so this doc.jpg is an image file and now it has been uh, loaded and converted to a numpy array so numpy n dimensional array and uh, you can also check what is the shape of this image so image dot shape will give you the image shape or you can also include print so print image shape so it will tell you so the dimension of the image so this one so this first value and the second value represents the dimension and the third value represents the color channel okay so this is uh, basically a colored image so we have uh, the value as three so uh, as i told you in the previous video we have discussed that there are like two types of images one type is a grayscale image where there is like one color channel and there are rgb images where uh, we have three color channels so red green and blue so we have seen that and uh, like so this image uh, has a particular dimension so if you if you consider any image so there is a particular height and there is a width to this image and uh, this is, can be represented as 200 into 200 or 300 into 500 and so on so in this case the image dimension is 1365 into 2048 so this is nothing but um, you know this particular image so this particular dog image can be split into small small boxes of this many counts okay so in this case if you consider a 200 into 200 image so there will be like 200 boxes here and 200 boxes in this horizontal axis and the vertical axis so if you wanted to count the total number of boxes that you have you need to multiply these two values and that one represents your pixels okay 
for a uh, uh, you know uh, 200 into 200 image you will be having 40000 small small boxes and this particular box represents your pixel okay so that is what we call as pixel and if you want to count the total number of pixels that you have in this particular image you have to multiply these two values so that would be your total pixel count so what this means is like for a grayscale image each box represents what is the white color intensity and the values range from 0 to 255 255 being complete white color and 0 being like a, a black color and the middle values represents different shades of this white and so on but if we consider a colored image like this we have three such matrices whereas in the case of grayscale images we just have one matrix which gives us the color intensity of white color whereas in this case we have three matrices and the first matrix will tell you what is the red color intensity of each of this box and what is the green color intensity and third matrix is what is the blue color intensity and so on so when all these values is, values combined we get this particular image because uh, all the colors are uh, you know originating from these these three colors okay so uh, red green and blue so we call this colors as primary colors and so on so this we have discussed and uh, as we have seen that uh, the difference between this grayscale and rgb is that we have three channels red green and blue and that's why we have this value as three so you can consider this particular image or this particular numpy array as three matrices and each matrices is in the shape of 1365 into 2048 okay and uh, now we don't know which is the height and which is the width right so we can also you know display this um, image from this numpy array so i'll show you how this numpy array looks like so we have uh, taken this dog.jpg which kind of looks like this and uh, i'll just print this uh, uh, img now so print img okay so let's see what is the values are looking like so this is the numpy array that we have and uh, so you can see all the values are between 0 and 255 as i told you 0 means black and 255 means white so all the values are between that range so this is how the image has been stored and converted to a numpy array and this particular thing is very very important so once we have this image data we have to convert uh, this to this particular format okay and numpy array and um, there is also another interesting thing that we can do with it so it's not like you can only convert image to numpy array you can also convert this numpy array to uh, to an image okay so you can get all these numbers and you can see what what does you know all these numbers means so the importance of this is like in some cases the data set that you have will already be processed so let's say that we have a uh, uh, 10000 dog images and someone would have already processed this and uh, would have already converted this images to numpy arrays so now what you can do is you can uh, convert this numpy arrays uh, at, into an image so that is a very important task i'll show you how we can do this reverse step so we have uh, seen like how we can uh, convert this image uh, a jpg file to a numpy array now we can see how we can convert this numpy array to an image okay so this step will be so all these things are very basic but all this will be like very useful for you in image recognition and computer vision task so please practice all these things and these are like very simple so now we are going to display so displaying the image from numpy array okay so this numpy array has been stored in the variable called as img right now i am going to create another uh, array called as or another variable called as image plot so this plot is equal to plt.show so we have already seen this plt.show while uh, building this uh, you know uh, plots and graphs and so on so so it's the same function sorry so we have to use this plt.im show so im show means so we have to show the image that we have and within this parenthesis mention img so img is nothing but the uh, uh, numpy representation of that particular image and uh, now use plt.show so this uh, numpy array will be converted into an image and it will be plotted now we can see that particular image here. okay so now we can see this uh, image so all this numpy arrays has been converted to an image so it is just a reverse step now you can see this y axis and x axis so this won't be present in the original image so this is just you can consider this as the you know x axis values and the y axis value so this is nothing but uh, the pixel numbers and so on so in this uh, you know y axis we have values larger than you know like 1200 in the uh, x axis we have like uh, more than 2000 so if you come to this image dot shape we have that 1365 as value so this 1365 is nothing but the total number of pixels we have in this uh, y axis and uh, the second value is 2048 so 2048 represents this many numbers okay 
So if you want to count the total number of boxes or total number of pixels, you need to multiply these two images. So we can say that this 2300 um, uh, or something represents my width and this value, uh, uh, which is like 1350 uh, uh, represents my height. So if I go to this image, so this first value represents the height of the image and this 2048 represents the width of this image and this is like very important for us to understand okay so this is how you can take an image and you can convert it convert it to a numpy array and if you want you can also convert this numpy array to a uh, image back so this is like a very important thing and now so we have seen so we can read this image file and convert it to numpy array so it's not like you you have this matplotlib.image library alone so it's not like that so you can also use this pillow library so there are uh, functions in this pillow library as well as open cv library in order to read the images and store it as numpy arrays okay so the next thing that we will be discussing is uh, how we can resize this image again this is like a very important step because uh, before feeding your uh, data set to your neural network so let's say that uh, we have 50,000 images all these images sh uh, should be in the same shape so then only our neural network can uh, uh, can go through the images correctly and it can understand it so if the images are in different dimensions it kind of get confused so that's the basic idea so we have to resize all the images uh, you know in a common dimension okay and the other thing is here we are just considering one images right so we are just taking one image and we are converting to numpy array and here also we will take this particular so this same image and we will resize it but when we are working in a deep learning project or a deep learning use case so you will have a folder and this particular folder will uh, have you know 10,000 or 20,000 or 30,000 images so you have to do this processing in all the images so I am showing this for only one image but uh, you know uh, we can do this for like uh, all the images in a particular folder so we will discuss this while we are working on uh, some deep learning use cases but for now understand how we can do this for one single file so this next part of the code will be how to resize the images so i'll just make a text here as resizing the image using pillow library so before we have used matplotlib.image now we are going to use pillow Okay, so pillow library again. So there are also functions uh, in uh, OpenCV as well as pillow to resize the images. Here I'll show you how you can do that in pillow. So from pill import image. Okay, so this is how. Uh, okay, one second. So import image. Okay, so this is the name of the pillow library P I L. So and all the things will be in caps. And there is a module within this pillow called as image. So this image is the module that we are going to use. This I should be in caps. That is like very important. So I'll run this. Uh, we are importing this pillow library and this uh, image module. And uh, I'll create another uh, uh, you know variable. So I'll just name this as same you know I M G, which stands for image. And uh, now we can mention image dot open okay okay sorry so this should be a small o so image dot open so this image is nothing but the module that we have imported here okay so image dot open and within this we need to mention the path of the file that we have this dog dot jpg file so i'll copy this and i'll paste it here so let's see and uh, once this image has been opened so what you can do is image is equal to or i'll name this as image resize so image resized is equal to img dot resized so let's say 200 comma 200 okay so this parenthesis so we have this parenthesis and within this parenthesis we have a tuple so we know the tuple should be enclosed in this parenthesis and so on and here i'm mentioning what the dimension of the image should be so i'm converting the image that has this dimension of uh, 1365 2048 uh, you know dimension to 200 into 200 image so we are just basically reducing the dimension of this image so let's run this so first we are opening this file and we are storing this in the variable called as image and now we are taking that particular uh, image and now we are resizing that to the dimension 200 comma 200 okay so let's run this so this particular line will uh, convert this image okay so jpeg has no attribute resize sorry so this should be resize so we should remove that d so let's run this now okay so now this image has been resized now what i'll do is i'll uh, check the shape of this uh, image resized okay so let's print this image resized dot shape so i'm not sure whether it has this uh, shape attribute let's see 
okay so this image object has no attribute shape okay so let's there is another way to find this image dimension so let's now what we shall do is uh, so this is in the form of an image now let's save this resized image so we have this original image which is dog.jpg now let's save this resized image so uh, img underscore resized dot save so we have to use this save function and uh, within this quotes you have to mention what is the name of the file uh, that you want to save so let's say that this is dog image resized okay so dog image resized so this is the name of the file dot jpg okay so let's run this so this will uh, save the file to the current directory you are in okay so in case again if you are working in Python or or uh, you know uh, uh, spider or something so this particular image will be stored where your uh, python file uh, you are working on is stored so let's say that you are creating a python file in spider and you are naming this to processing image data so this particular file will be stored in a, a folder right so that this image will be saved so in the same directory so now we have this dog image resized dot uh, jpg so you can see now this uh, image has been resized whereas previously we have seen that this image was like very large right so it is this is like a huge image because the dimension is very large so we have to scroll it to see the image and so on whereas now it has been resized so we can also load this again through this uh, matplotlib library in order to visualize this image so i'll just copy this code and uh, so we have to read this image first so for this uh, reading this image we have used this particular line right so mpimg.imread so i'll just paste it here okay so the only thing is we have to uh, like remove this one so this is my original image now i have to give this a resized image so dog image resized copy path and let's paste it here and now let's uh, you know name this as resize okay so image resized or i'll just put this as image underscore res because you may be confused with this particular variable so let's name this as image underscore res and uh, i'll just put it here and uh, image resized plot okay so image resized mp image i am read we are reading the file image is plot show. okay so now we can uh, run this form let's see whether the image is resized okay now you can see so previously the image kind of looked like this and you can see what is the dimension of the image and now we can see the image has been uh, uh, the dimension of the image has been reduced and both x-axis and y-axis are the values of 200 so this basically means the dimension of the image that we have so now this image dot res we are reading this through mp img right so uh, this has been already converted to numpy array so we have seen that here so when you uh, read the file or read the image file using this im read it will be converted into a numpy array and you can print the shape right now let's uh, try to find the shape of this image so we know that it will be in the shape of uh, 200 into 200 right but we can check it once so i'm going to print the shape of this image underscore res so image uh, resized dot shape okay so let's see okay so previously we add the image with the dimension 1365 and 2048 with three colored channel which is rgb image so that rgb image uh, has not been affected only the dimension has been changed so we have the dimension as 200 in 200 into 200 because we have mentioned the dimension as 200 comma 200 so you can give any dimensions that you want but there is the catch here so few machine learning models so we also come across this pre-trained models and uh, in that case so those models accept only a particular uh, image dimension so you have to refer the model that you are going to use and you have to give that particular dimension while resizing the image again so when we are working in a use case in deep learning so instead of uh, doing this one we will uh, do this for uh, maybe 1000 images or 10,000 images but the concept is same so we have done this for one image right so we just create a for loop and we will make the for loop to loop through that particular folder and resize all the images in that particular folder so this is what we do and uh, so we have converted the first two things right so first we have seen how we can uh, read this image file and how we can convert it to an umpire array and then we have seen um, uh, you know how to resize this image and finally how we can convert a rgb image rgb image is not but the colored image to a grayscale image so this is the next thing that we are going to discuss so let's see uh, how that can be done okay so for this let's take this original image which is represented as this dog.jpg and here i'm going to use this open cv function 
So the reason is I just wanted to introduce you to the different libraries that we have and to, um, you know for image processing and this open CV is very very important. So a lot of image recognition and computer vision tasks we will be using this open CV library in the future. So you know just try to understand what are all the functions and uh, functionalities and, and the you know different uses of this library it will be useful for you in the long run so the next step will be to convert rgb images to grayscale image using opencv okay so converting rgb images to grayscale so let's see First, we have to import this OpenCV library. So you can just go to Google and, and uh, do some research on this OpenCV. So we have seen that Pillow has been imported as PIL, right? Uh, uh, how OpenCV is imported is import OpenCV. So we don't use OpenCV, we use CV2. So, so this is how the OpenCV library has to be used. And as I've told you, CV2 stands for computer vision. So here we are, I'll just make a comment as importing OpenCV library and uh, here also let's name this uh, image as img so we are creating a variable called this img and this img is equal to cv2 dot imb okay so this is the function that we have so in the case of pillow we have opened the image using this image module and in the case of matplotlib dot image module we have again used this im read so mp uh, img dot im read which is this uh, matplotlib dot uh, uh, image module and for this cv2 there is a function called as im read and within this parenthesis again you have to mention the path of this file so i'll copy this dog dot jpg file so let's copy this and uh, let's run this one now let's check this image uh, you know uh, type again so type of this img you can see so this is also reads the file in the form of numpy array so a numpy n dimensional array so mp image uh, dot im read and cv2 dot im read uh, both of these functions have the same uh, you know have the same functionality so this image has been converted to a numpy array and after this only we will convert this image to a uh, you know grayscale image so now this is in the form of a rgb image right a colored image and now let's see how we can convert this colored image that has three channels into a grayscale image uh, that has only one channel and after doing this i'll explain you what is the significance of this and why we have to do this okay so i'll just mention this img dot shape let's again check what is the shape of this image so we know we already know the shape it's 1365 comma 2048 so this is the image dimension and this one represents uh, the color channel so the three color channels are red green and blue and now i'll create another variable as grayscale image and this is where we are going to convert our image. So grayscale image is equal to CV2. So we are going to use this CV2 library, which is computer vision library dot. There is a function called as CVT color. So we are going to convert the color that we have. And the arguments that you have to give to this function are first is the image that you are working on. So we have read this image using this IM read uh, function and we have stored that in, in the variable called as IMG. And this IMG is nothing but the numpy array of this particular image. And that is the first argument that you have to pass. And then you have to mention how we are going to convert. So cv2 dot color underscore um, RGB to gray okay okay so this is the conversion so first is the image that you have already loaded using cv2 dot time rate function and the second parameter is cv2 dot color to rgb uh, to gray so we are just telling that i want to convert this image from this rgb format to a grayscale format so that's what we are mentioning here using this cvt color function okay now let's uh, do this so the main thing is this should not be done on the uh, image file but this should be done on the numpy array that we have now let's see what is the change that has been going on here so we have run this and uh, again you can check what is the type of this grayscale image so it will also be in the form of the same uh, you know uh, uh, numpy array format so type grayscale image let's run this so we can see here it is in the form of numpy.md array now the interesting thing is if you print the shape of this grayscale image so let's copy this grayscale image dot shape when you print this the value will be 
one three six five comma two zero four eight. Now we don't have this three, right? So the reason is we know that grayscale images have only one channel. So that's why we don't have the value as three. So this third value, when you print this image dot shape, represents what is the color channel, whether it is three channel or or uh, one channel. So as we know that grayscale has only one channel, so it is not mentioned here. And no values are there in the third. It is like understood that the value is one. That means like uh, the color channel is one, which stands for grayscale images. Now, if you want to display the images, what you can do is so we can just you know display this grayscale image and see. Again, so we previously we have used this uh, you know matplotlib library, so we have used, used this uh, plot im show function and we have did this plt dot show right. So we can also display images using cv two dot im show function. So that function to do this is cv two dot im show. Okay, but the problem is this particular function won't work in Collab. So Collab doesn't allow you to run this function, but it's not an issue because they have an alternate function to this. So the reason I'm mentioning this is like again, if you're working on Python or Spider or any IDEs, you can use this one. So you can use this there. So that's not a problem. So I'll show you. Uh, I'll just mention it here. Like so, cv2 dot im show im show will display the image. Uh, but this will not be allowed in Google Collab. Okay, so there is an alternative, right? So the alternative is from Google dot patch. Sorry, from Google dot Collab dot patch. So from Google dot Collab dot patches. Um. Import cv2. You have to mention instead of dot. You have to mention I am show. Okay. Okay. So cv2 I am show. So this is the function that we are going to use. I'll just uh, you know make this uh, particular line bold. Okay. So uh, so this is nothing but when I say cv2 dot I am show, I am loading this function from cv2 library. So instead of having that function, so Google uh, this collab developers has built this particular function where they have stored this in google dot collab dot patches and from this we have from there we are going to use this cv2 dot I am show. So first we will import this from Google. So this is very very important because in, in several cases we have to display the images and if you are working in collab, so it, this uh, cv2 dot I am show you cannot use. So you have to get practice with this uh, function. So Google collab dot patches import cv2 I am show. Okay, so let's run this one and now we will be using this function. Okay, so this is for displaying again so this is for the same purpose displaying the image but what we are going to display here is the grayscale image so previously we, we had this uh, colored image and we have converted this using the cvt color function and we have mentioned that i wanted to convert this from rgb so which stands for red green and blue channel to grayscale image and now let's see i'm mentioning the cv2 i am show and here mention the image where which you have processed okay grayscale image so this is like same thing. So we are converting this numpy array uh, into a uh, image. So let's run this one and see whether the image has been converted. Okay. Now you can see here the previously the image was in uh, uh, you know in a, in a colored format, but now it has been converted into a grayscale image. So it is like the original dimension, which is like one three six five uh, into two zero four eight. But you know when when you run this in matplotlib, so matplotlib library will just uh, shorten it and it will display in this format but uh, you know cv2 dot im show won't do that it will just give you the original dimension of the image and so on so that's why you have this large image where matplotlib just uh, shrunk that image and, sh and display this in a shorter format so that's the thing so these are all the things that i wanted to discuss today so first is how you can uh, you know load this uh, image file to a numpy array so for that we have seen that we can use this mp img uh, uh, you know library which is matplotlib.image library and we can use this iamrate function we can also use cv2.iamrate function as well so we have seen how we can do that and we have seen that we can uh, print the uh, dimension which is nothing but the width and height of the image as well as how many color channels are there and three means rgb image and if no values are there that means like base images and we have also seen 
how we can resize these images using this uh, image dot resize where this function is present in pillow. Again, you can use um, the resize function that is present in uh, you know uh, open CV as well. So it is like CV two dot resize. And then we have seen how we can convert this uh, colored images into the form of grayscale image. And if you wanted to save this image, there is also another option. So previously we have seen, right? So we have saved an image. So once we have resized this image, we have uh, saved this image. And this is nothing but the function that we have in pillow. There is also another option in CV2 as well, in open CV as well. So that is, uh, let's save this, saving the grayscale image. So this is a process using this OpenCV, right? So we can write the CV2, which stands for OpenCV dot I am right. So I am right means we are writing an image or in other words, we are uh, saving an image. So I am stands for image and here uh, you have to mention what is the name and the path of this file. I'll just mention this as dog grayscale image. So we have dog rescale, uh, resized image. Now this is dog grayscale image dot JPG. And uh, so this is the name of the file. And now you have to mention what you are going to convert. So here I'm mentioning the library name and here I'm mentioning the function. And here I'm mentioning that what is the name that I wanted to wanted to you know create an image just, but I didn't you know mention what I'm going to convert, right? So I'm going to copy this grayscale image. So this is where my grayscale image is. So let me put it here. So this will take this grayscale image and uh, save it uh, in the name of dog grayscale image. Okay, so let's run this and it will be stored here. So once this is run, you can uh, see here that that file has been stored. So this is the resized image that we did using the pillow library and uh, we have converted this grayscale and we have stored here. So you can download this and you can also see this. So this is how you can convert your uh, um, you know, colored images to grayscale images. Now, uh, the uh, most important thing is, I told you that I'll tell you what is the purpose of doing this, right? So, if you see this, one main thing about this conversion of RGB image to a grayscale image is, so, like, if you consider the same image, this uh, uh, colored image and the grayscale image, if you consider this, both of these uh, images are like the same thing. But in the form of NumPy array, this colored image is uh, basically, it is a three matrix, matrix, right? It is like, uh, uh, like three matrices where, matrices where one matrix uh, represents a red intensity, second matrix uh, represents a uh, green, third matrix represents a blue intensity. So we have seen here. So when, when we uh, take uh, two similar images, the same images, and we uh, convert it to an array, NumPy array, the colored image will give you three arrays or three matrices, whereas a uh, grayscale image will give you only one image. Now, this is a very crucial thing because so if you convert this RGB image into a grayscale image, you are saving a lot of space. OK, so instead of so uh, instead of having three matrices, you are having only one matrix, which saves a lot of space. And uh, so this can be a small thing when we are working with one image. But when you are working with 10,000 image and 50,000 images, this is a huge change. So like if you have a 50,000 images, so each image will have three images, right? So you have to multiply it with like 50,000 into three. Whereas if you have grayscale images, so the total number of matrix that you have will be 50,000, right? So this is the main advantage of this. So this will save a lot of space and um, this will save a lot of computation power as well as the time that has been taking for processing your image. So this is one uh, thing and that is also another important factor. So you cannot do this conversion all the time. So there are uh, use cases are problems where the color of the image is not important. Whereas in some cases, the color of the image is like very, very important. Let's say that you are uh, building some uh, neural network in order to determine what is the color of the dog. In that case, you cannot convert it to grayscale because like uh, when, when the RGB images are there, it will give you more information on what are all the different colors that you have in an image. Whereas in the case of grayscale, um, that information is not there because so we can say that in some cases, this color information is very crucial. Whereas in some cases, you know, we have to determine where are the edges in a particular image and, and a few other things where the color won't be important. In that case, instead of having an RGB image, you can uh, you know use uh, uh, or you can convert those images to an RGB image. Sorry, I'm sorry, like uh, in, in cases where you don't need the color information, you can convert the RGB images to grayscale images so that the processing is kind of easier where we don't need that information. Okay, so let's say that you are building a neural network system that can uh, 
determined uh, uh, like whether uh, an image represents a dog or it represents a, a simple ball and, and something so on so in that case the color information is not there so the main thing that the model checks is like what are, what is the shape of the object that is present there if it is in the in the round shape it will tell that it is a ball so if a dog image is there so it just tries to find the difference so in this case if you think about it so the color information is not that important whereas if you are working on a project where you have to determine what is the color of the image of a particular dog in that case this color image is important right so it is a trade off that you have where uh, when the color information is not necessary you can uh, instead of having this a uh, large uh, you know matrices is uh, you know uh, three times more matrices so if you have a rgb image you have three times more matrices so instead of that you can convert it to grayscale image so that you are saving a lot of computation power as well as the resource and time so this is the uh, advantage of doing this and we will uh, do this a lot of time in our deep learning use cases so please uh, try to understand this deeply practice this with different images and and uh, you know please go through what are all the different functions that we have so i have shown you how we can convert this uh, you know uh, image to grayscale right so check whether there is any functions in order to do the same thing so instead of open cv whether you can use pillow and as i have told you there is an uh, function in open cv in order to resize this image whereas in this case we have used pillow so do some research on that part as well so here we have used this pill right so from this pillow we have uh, imported this image and we have done this so try to do this uh, with open cv library and so on so this will be like very useful for you when you are working in, in deep learning applications so in the next upcoming video so it will be on uh, and written digit classification which is a deep learning use case so after that we will uh, go back to our machine learning topics and uh, once in a while i'll try to post deep learning projects and use cases video so that it is kind of a mix of both the things okay so that's it from my side and i hope that uh, you understood all the things covered in this video so please practice all the things watching this video alone won't help you so please practice and try to understand all these things so it is a very interesting concept okay so that's it from my side and see i'll see you in the next upload thanks for watching